Welcome back to the Lost Constellations. I'm John Berentine, Director of Public Policy at IDA. Throughout International Dark Sky Week 2020, we have explored constellations that once appeared on star charts, but that were discarded in the early 20th century in a process that gives us the night sky recognized by modern astronomers. Today's Lost Constellation is Argo Navis, a figure representing a sailing ship that was once the largest in the western night sky before it was broken up over 250 years ago into four constellations that still appear on star charts. Argo Navis dates to the ancient world when it was drawn after the Greek mythological story of Jason and the quest for the Golden Fleece. The figure is a large wooden hulled ship with masts and sails that was divided up during the 18th century into four constituent constellations that remain officially recognized today. Carina, the keel, Pupus, the poop deck, Vela, the sails, and Pyxis, the mariner's compass. Even after its disassembly by Enlightenment astronomers, charts of the night sky generally showed it intact until around the turn of the 20th century. The tale of Jason and the Argonauts is one of the most famous Greek myths, and the story of the quest to obtain the Golden Fleece has been retold for countless generations. Jason was the son of Eson, the rightful king of an ancient city called Ilocos. Eson's power-hungry half-brother Peleus overthrew him as he sought to gain dominion over all of the Greek region of Thessaly. When he became an adult, Jason challenged Peleus to the kingdom. Peleus agreed to hand over power if Jason brought him the golden fleece, the golden wool of the winged ram Chrysomalos, which was held in the kingdom of Colchis in what was now the modern country of Armenia. Jason was aided in his quest by the goddess Hera, who was really manipulating him for her own reasons, and the goddess of wisdom, Athena, to provide a vessel for Jason to use. Heroes from around the ancient world joined Jason on his journey to Colchis. The ship's name is variously recorded as drawn from the name of its builder, Argos, a city of the same name near the site where Jason was said to have departed, and a Greek word meaning swift. The journey to Colchis was a long one, and the Argonauts faced many trials and tribulations on Aegean islands like Lemnos and Samothrace. Needless to say, Jason was successful in his quest for the fleece, and upon laying it at the feet of Peleus after a lengthy and harrowing return home, not unlike the one Decius faced a generation later. But there's a tragic postscript to the story. The Argo was beached at a place called Pagasai, and Jason became a broken man. He rejected the wife he took from Colchis for another woman, and his wife killed their sons. Jason wandered the world before stumbling upon the rotting hulk of his former ship. He lay down on the beach beneath its prow and fell asleep. As he rested, the prow fell and killed him, ending the story of this Greek hero. In honor of the exploits of Jason, so the story goes, the Greeks placed the remains of the ship in the night sky. This postscript also explains a curious feature of the constellation, because it has no prow. Argonavis first appeared in a list of constellations in an astronomical treaty by the Greek astronomer Eudoxus in the fourth century BCE, called the Phenomena, is the earliest reference on the ancient Greek night sky that still survives. But the story of the Argo is much older than Eudoxus. The events of the story take place a generation before the Trojan War, thought to have occurred in literature around 1300 BCE, and persisted in oral tradition until the time of the epic poet Homer five centuries later. But did the Greeks invent a ship constellation, or was it received from somewhere else? The story itself may be many centuries older still, originating in Mesopotamia and arriving in Greece by the way of ancient Egypt. Like many Greek tales, the Argo myth probably dates to the heroic era of the Bronze Age from just before the beginning of the written tradition back to around 2000 BCE. But the Mesopotamians didn't see a ship in this part of the night sky. Rather, it's probably the case that the Greeks identified a ship given their seafaring culture and adapted it to the mythology of the Argo. So what kind of ship did the Argo represent? European star charts gave it an appearance not unlike the sailing ships of their times. But in ancient times, it would have represented a way making it look much more like the ships that plied the trade routes of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. The Argo would have been some variety of a galley, which is an ocean-going craft with a shallow draft, a low profile, 
and a long, narrow hull that could be powered by either oars or sails. The simplest of early Greek galleys, called a monoreme, had only a single bank of oarsmen on each side of the ship. In particular, the number of oars involved suggests a particular kind of monoreme. Crew lists compiled from various ancient sources yield a total of 49 men and one woman, Atalanta, for a total of 50 oarsmen. This number suggests a specific kind of galley called a pentaconter, from a Greek word meaning 50 oared. Argonavis is associated with three other obsolete constellations. One, Rober Carolinum, the royal oak, solved an aesthetic problem having to do with the figure's apparently missing front end. The ship was often depicted as disappearing into a conveniently placed cloud of mist in order to hide the missing part. But in 1678, the English astronomer Edmund Halley turned these stars into a new constellation, honoring King Charles II and his father Charles I, who was executed during the English Civil War. Elsewhere, stars traditionally marking the ship's mast were turned into Pixis Nautica, the ship's compass, when the ship was broken up in the 1750s, but the same stars enjoyed a brief renaissance in the 1840s as the constellation Malus, the mast. And separately, at the turn of the 19th century, stars further north in the uppermost reaches of the former Argonavis were repurposed by the German astronomer Johanna Elit Bode as Lachium Funus, or the log and line, referring to an instrument for measuring the speed of a moving ship. All of these constellations were long forgotten by the time the modern canon of constellations was decided in the 1920s. Argo Navis is best seen from the Southern Hemisphere, but parts of it can be located from about as far north as 40 degrees north latitude. To find it, first locate the familiar figure of Orion, the hunter, and follow a line from its three belt stars to Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. From there, go nearly due south to the next brightest star in the sky, Canopus, marking the keel of the ship. Most of the brighter stars to the north and east of Canopus belong to what was once the Argo. Join me again tomorrow when we'll look at a lost constellation of the northern hemisphere sky whose name and figure have multiple layers of meaning.